Now to an NBC Connecticut exclusive. These are just some of the faces of the people in our state whose fates remain a mystery. There are Connecticut's unsolved missing persons cases, and there's a never-ending heartbreak for their loved ones left behind with, with no closure. Yeah, no answers. Heidi Void has the story of a woman who knows that pain all too well and what she's doing now to help them find closure. There are mysteries, you know, where is this person? They're the cases in the news right now. Jennifer Dulos, Peter Recchia, Andine Froberg, missing persons mysteries, leaving families desperate for answers. If he is alive, if he is dead, we need to bring Peter home. And detectives searching for clues. The immediate leads that we have have been exhausted. There are at least 326 unsolved missing persons cases right now in Connecticut, according to the Office of the Victim Advocate. Each one of them, a unique individual with their own story and loved ones living in heartbreaking limbo. Some cases are handled by local police, others by the state police missing persons unit, which is also responsible for thousands of amber and silver alerts every year. Thankfully, a majority of those individuals are found. But some are not. Connecticut's coldest missing persons cases go back to the 1950s. Decades, yes. And what we do, what our missing persons unit does, every six months they look at those cases, they check to see if there's any new leads. But for the families left behind, there's no such thing as a cold case. For 15 years, Jan Smolinski has been searching every day for answers, for justice, for her son, Billy. He was 31 when he disappeared from his Waterbury home in 2004. Family and police believe he was murdered. I vowed that I would never give up looking for him. But from day one, Jan says getting those answers was difficult. Police told me to wait three days to make the official report, which that three days was very important. Um, Forensics were lost. Which is why she's fighting for other families, helping to change state law in 2010 to remove any waiting period to file a report, and pushing now for a national bill called Billy's Law to strengthen and link two national databases, the FBI's National Crime Information Center, or NCIC, and the Department of Justice's National Missing and Unidentified Persons System, or NamUs. Throughout the world, people are are checking these databases and um, they're getting answers. Despite bipartisan support in Washington, the bill hasn't passed yet. But Jan says they won't give up because even if she never holds her son again, no one can stop her from holding on to hope. I believe one day in the future we're going to get our answers. Heidi Voigt, NBC Connecticut News. And Jan says social media has been a game changer for these kinds of cases for families and law enforcement as well. To this day, she still gets tips and even leads online. Yeah, and we talk about closure, maybe closure for the case for these families. There's never total closure with that it, it kind of loss. It can't ever go away, no. There's also a $60,000 reward for the whereabouts of Billy Smolinski. So if you know something, anything, please call the tip line. It's 203-530-9135.